the BRCA1 gene was not even sequenced until 1994, so genetic testing was not even practical uh, prior to the mid-1990s. And it was a brand new field at that time, so people were very concerned about how patients would respond to finding out about mutations in their genes that might indicate a higher risk for cancer, uh, how they might feel about knowing they, they could pass these mutations down to their kids. There was concerns about insurance uh, discrimination in the future. So the, the uh, appropriately, a very complex system of genetic counseling was born. And patients would spend an hour, sometimes two hours, talking to a genetic counselor before making the decision to get tested. And then the blood would be drawn, it would be sent to the lab, and it might be six weeks later before a result came back. Uh, that was in the, in the 90s. Through the early 2000s, it became apparent that the patients I was seeing in the clinic with breast cancer needed the genetic testing information to make decisions about, am I gonna do a lumpectomy? Am I gonna do a mastectomy? Am I going to do bilateral mastectomies? Uh, and we, we needed things like BRCA1 and BRCA2 information to calculate the risk of getting second breast cancers. Um, as more genes were added, and, and, and again, through the early 2000s, more genes were identified that are related to breast cancer risk. There's currently nine genes, but I needed to know, do they have a, a P53 mutation? Maybe I don't wanna do a lumpectomy and expose them to radiation treatments. Uh, so the, the cumbersome genetic testing, counseling and testing process uh, was really making it impossible to get the information that was needed in order to plan surgery. So as people have become more familiar with what genetic testing is, as the federal government has uh, implemented laws that uh, um, prevent genetic discrimination, and as we've learned more about patients who get genetic testing, we, we realize that it's, it's really not as complicated as it seemed when it first started, and as it needed to be when it first started. Uh, so we've taken the actual testing out of the Specialized Cancer Genetic Center and put it into the breast surgery clinic. So a new breast cancer patient seen in any one of our Johns Hopkins clinics will have the option of getting genetic testing done right there. As the technology has improved, it's gone from a blood draw to a simple spit test. Um, it's mailed in and uh, we get the, the results on the first seven genes usually within about a week instead of waiting six weeks. So suddenly we're in a position where we can have the information to calculate risk of second breast cancers. We can understand whether certain drugs are gonna be helpful for certain patients uh, very rapidly and as part of the new patient evaluation. So we worked with the uh, cancer genetic specialists to set up a plan where we could test patients in the surgery clinics when they come in for their initial appointment. So the cancer the genetic counselors, they're very busy people, they're very skilled and knowledgeable people, and they really didn't need to be spending time sorting through patients to figure out who needs testing, who doesn't need testing. So now the surgeons are getting the testing done in the surgery clinic, and when there's a mutation, they go to the cancer genetics professionals to understand the risk of other cancers and to get referrals set up uh, with other specialists that can help manage those risks. It's wonderful that we can get these genetic test results and understand better what types of surgery to do, understand whether we can do radiation treatments, understand what types of systemic treatments we need to do. But the thing is, people with these inherited predispositions, with these genetic um, mutations that they've inherited, they're high risk for breast cancer. And in a way, it's a bit of a failure if we don't find out about their mutation until after they're diagnosed with breast cancer. 
because there's many things they can do. You know, we'll start MRIs at age 25 if we know you have a BRCA1 mutation, and some women opt for prophylactic surgery, and then they just never even get the cancers. So in the future, genetic testing is going to become more widely available uh, to anybody who wants it, essentially is concerned about their genetic risk and would be willing to take measures to address that risk and, and maybe avoid the cancers altogether.